I'm Mark Thomason, originally from Des Moines, Iowa. I even have some deals back there, but I've been in Colorado since 1966, and I've been a licensed broker since 1968. All right. So in your words, what's the difference between more standard forms of real estate brokering and exchanging? I think it's all in the same bag, but as a broker looking for commissions, if I take your listing, I do three things. I put up a sign, I produce a flyer, uh, I put it on the MLS. If you're an exchanger, you do four things. You present it for exchange. Having asked this question of your client, if we get it sold for you, what are you gonna do with your money, with the money? And if he says buy real estate, describe it. And you introduce the concept of exchange and you say, sometimes we find somebody that might want your property for the property you've just described. And that's an exchange. Counseling, getting to know your client. Over the years, exchange counselors go back to family, go back to family, do deals over and over to help people develop their, uh, their wealth. And uh, a difference between a, a, an exchanger and a typical agent, once he lists and sells your property, goodbye, I'm done. An exchanger develops a client network and exchanging is called uh, uh, counseling-centered or actually client-centered. We start with the client. The property is less important than his goals, particularly his long-term goals. And so what are the benefits, some of the benefits of exchanging versus cash for property? If you're a commission broker, you get to keep the whole fee. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one because exchanging is harder than a normal deal. But that's a benefit that comes along. You're not splitting because the other broker is being paid by his client. That's one. The benefits are just that we're, we're dream makers. We, we, uh, we, we get the person to describe what he wants, and when we find it, we have a party. So what kind of people do you think are attracted to this type of brokering? I don't know, but when I go to the national seminars, these guys are heavyweights, and they're treating uh, trading property is like bubblegum cards. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're all heavyweights. Uh, it takes any, any type of person who says, I don't want this property. And if I can sell it, I'll buy this. And we, we, we get rid of the middleman. We get rid of the selling and the, the uh, reinvestment. It all happens simultaneously. It seems to me like when I think of real estate agents, they're, they're very um, confidential, they're, they withhold information because that's how they make money. They take exclusive listings and all that stuff and that is built into it. So in, do you think exchangers kind of approach it a little differently? They have to, uh, because motivation is a big factor. And as a matter of fact, what we do at exchanges is against the law. That is to say, in, in listing your property, I cannot give your motivation legally. And so we always tell the, a new broker, you need to have a little, a little paragraph at the bottom of your listing that because sharing motivation can facilitate a deal, I'm allowed to, to give your motivation. And that is, I'm, I'm released from breaking the law. The, the end game is to get your client exactly what they want more That's efficiently. Right. Okay. That's right. Sometimes we're surprised what our clients will do. Uh, they give a narrow perspective and all of a sudden they look at a bunch of what we call mini offers with, where I make a presentation of the other brokers write mini offers and I take that to my client. And he'll say, I can, I'll look at this one. I'll look at this one. I'll look at this one. And we, they broaden their perspective uh, and we get to know them better. Why do you think it's, um, why do you think it hasn't like caught on as much as it sh maybe should have? It's, not, it's it been seem there forever. It'll never go away. I don't know. I know that before due on sale clauses uh, started to become the norm, uh, 
we could exchange eat more easily because we could swap loans. Now it takes third party influence, it's harder to put together. And frankly, today there's just more cash out there. It used to be people were, were hoarding their cash and they would look to exchanging. But, uh, the, but the, the motivation to exchange, the need to, of some broker to exchange, the excitement of the process, uh, anymore go to the national seminars, you see broadening uh, group of, of brokers, not, not diminishing. So earlier we just filmed you moderating. So can you explain what moderating is and why it's important? Uh, it's just kind of good. Uh, we've got the broker. He knows everything about the property. We've got the people out in the audience, mostly brokers, all brokers, and they're trying to figure out whether they're going to be interested in your deal. Moderator tries to get everybody interested. Um, the moderator has a script. The package that is presented is part of the script, but there's an order. And the moderators don't do anything new. They follow the order and they ask certain questions in certain order. For instance, I want to know about the property before I want to know about the financing or the, the income. Uh, I want to know about the, uh, the revenues and expenses. I want to know about the loan, whether it's assumable, whether I'm going to do new, new, uh, new financing. Then we get to the client. What's he done in the past? What's he looking to do in the future? How do we describe his problem? If he's got a problem he's trying to solve, some we call a don't water. I just had a horrible experience with real estate. You just get me out of this management. I don't want to do it anymore. And some are trying to build fortunes through leverage. Some hate debt, some love debt. Uh, it just depends on the client and his thrust. But when you get to halfway through the package, we're talking about the client. And exchanging, it really changes the rules of real estate marketing. We're client oriented, not property oriented. It has more to do with what are the negative aspects of what he owns and how would he, what would he prefer? Would he prefer having to go out and change out the garbage disposal? Or would he prefer a larger property where there's a property manager that does that? Okay, there are a lot of difference, depending on the scale and uh, benefits. Uh, I've got two properties in California. They're what we call currency lots. They hold the world together. What's the benefit of holding those? My daughter lives in California. I can kind of write off part of my trip to go out and visit my lots. So these are esoteric benefits, but that's the kind of thing that you can throw in once in a while. But then I hear about this term paper a lot. Can you explain what paper means to, to a layman? Well, it's privately held mortgages. That's purely and simply. If I've got a free and clear home, and, uh, and, and I would like to have income, I would have to sell it and reinvest the money to get income. If I carry back the paper, carry back the mortgage myself, I play the bank, then I'm gonna get my monthly income and I'm also getting it from a source that I fully appreciate and rely on. If the property goes south, or if the buyer goes south and defaults, I'm taking back a property I used to own. I'm the best manager to solve that problem, okay? But paper is, uh, is, is something that is more sophisticated in brokerage. It's less, you, you don't find very many residential brokers talking about paper, but exchange brokers love it. Do you have a deal that you'd like to, that you could talk about that was, uh you know, you felt was fulfilling other than you made money? Like a past deal. Long time ago, a, a broker from Canyon City presented a mobile home court, 26 unit mobile home court in Canyon City. This was back in the day when we had a lot of exchangers in our local Pikes Peak chapter. And I think she took home a dozen, what we call mini offers. This means a broker outlines a deal that he thinks would make some sense 
It doesn't, it's not binding on anybody, but it looks like an offer. I'll trade your dog for my cat. And here's how. Uh, she took home a dozen mini offers. And we're all told as brokers, don't make our own decisions based on what we would do. Let the client do it. And present them one at a time without any putting them in any order or telling them this is the one we think is best. She walked went through this thing with this doctor, an internist uh, from, I think, Florence. And when he came to mine, he said, I'll do this. And he tossed it on the table. And that was the end of the interview. And I couldn't figure out why he was doing it, but she came back and said, he wants your deal. It was a condominium in a ski area near, near, uh, near Lake Dillon, Keystone. And the highest, best use of a condo is it, once the baby pictures are gone, now you can show your condo. They all lose money. It's like a, like a sports team. You make it when you resell it. In the meantime, you're just writing checks, writing checks. And so I was under contract to take this condominium and I was hoping I could exchange it before the, the, the dues were having to be paid. And he, on the other hand, had purchased the mobile home court without telling his wife Doris or talking about it. Came home and said, I bought it today and I, I want you to run it. And she said, what? And she was a very uh, uh, posh, well-groomed lady, and, and this was a low-rent uh, thing, and she hated it. And every time she came home, having talked with a, a client and had a problem there in the mobile home court, doctor, the doctor would say, now, Taurus, we can't really just let it go because it's a big part of our, of our net worth. But someday, we'll sell it and use that money to buy the condominium you've always wanted in Lake Dillon. And we closed. That was a great guy. Now, you, sometimes you learn something from your client. Uh, once he got the condominium, uh, it had a loan on it. You can't get very good write-off on a condominium loan. Their house was free and clear. You can get good write-off on a house. So he borrowed money on the house to pay off the condominium. It helped his tax position. I learned something that day. Well, I have one more question for you, and I asked everyone this as the final question. Do you like your job? I love it. Why? Oh, it's every day is different. And uh, you sink your teeth into a property. Uh, it may take you out of the state. It may take you out of the country. But I love it. I've had properties, you know, in several states here, I even had a property once in Nova Scotia. I love going to Nova Scotia. 